just a minute or so to midday, so good morning. And I'm going to be with you now for 20 minutes. And I'd like you now just to maybe sit back and relax. Move about a bit on your chair and come into yourself. Whatever that means for you, to come into yourself. And just be at peace within yourself. There won't be any signs. I will be speaking from my personal experience and my heart. But yeah, there is heart and science. But I will be speaking from my own experience and my heart. So while we are in this place of bricks and mortar, and we have the light shut out, which is okay, um, we are still on the earth. So please feel and know that beneath the carpet and beyond the walls, earth is still here. So try and take in the energy that is within yourself and that it isn't far beyond the walls or beneath the carpet. Because that is our true life. And so it was about 18 or 19 years ago, I was gifted with a beautiful stay in the countryside in Galway. And I was there with other people who were also recovering from a life-threatening illness. And all the surgeons and all the therapists who had worked with me had truly done their work well. But I knew that there was another lap to go in my healing. And it was a privilege to be in that place with those people and it was lucky that every morning we got an opportunity of going out into the beautiful gardens with the chef of the day to choose and to pick our vegetables and our fruit and to come in and cook what we were going to eat that day. That was beautiful. And our carrots didn't have to be pristine. The clay was good. And that was a very healing experience. <coughs> and still I knew there was something else that I needed to add into all that for my healing. And it was late in April and early May when I was there and it was wonderful weather and warm and beautiful. And I took the opportunity, or maybe the light bulb just went on, and I spent so much time every day walking barefoot in the gardens and in the fields. I felt the earth not just beneath my feet, I felt the soil move through my veins. And at that point, I knew for sure that my real healing had begun and that I was moving through it. That was wonderful. And also during that time, there were opportunities to have lovely Indian head massages and reflexologies and whatever, but I knew that walking barefoot on the earth was my healing. For mind, for my cognitive being, for my emotional being, for my spiritual being, for my relational being. There and therein lay the healing. And that was good. 
But I knew I had to leave there and come back to my place in Donegal where I lived and its beautiful name. But I learned that somehow I had disengaged from my childhood because in my childhood I played in the fields and I ran barefoot and I loved the sand and I jumped in the ocean. I was part of the earth in my childhood, but I had disengaged from that, not knowingly, not willingly, and not consciously. But life had moved, and so it was academics, and it was theology, and it was a straight line up to God. And there was nothing of the eternal, you know, around me, or I didn't think there was. I was learning to become a nun, which I am today, but it was all straight up. <laughs> and I forgot. Well, I didn't forget. I just didn't remember. And Galway remembered that for me. I know that we never forget. We just don't remember. And so when I went back to Donegal, I knew I had to re-engage with the earth. That environment is very important. Let's take, for example, the acorn. The best horticulturist in this room, the most wonderful farmer or forester here in this room, you don't have to teach the acorn how to become an oak tree. The acorn has within itself everything. It has the essence. It knows how to grow into a wonderful oak tree to put those mighty roots down, to branch out, to protect and to shelter, to nurture and to feed so many. But if the acorn doesn't find, doesn't happen to land in a proper environment, there's a struggle. It may never grow into a wonderful oak tree. So I knew that I had to learn. I knew I had to relearn. I knew I had to pull up from within me my childhood experience. And I had to find everything I needed in the soil and in the environment. And I'm still learning. And I'm happy that on his deathbed, Michelangelo said, I'm still learning. So I'm in good company. <laughs> but I know that with the help of Klaus and Asante, I'll be graduating from junior infants this year to senior <laughs> infants. <laughs> and that'll be good. And that's OK. I'm alive. So you know of the wonderful Satish Kumar, when he arrived in Slough, in a not very wonderful environment, he said, how am I going to support? How am I going to make this community? How am I going to help here? And so he started, of course, with the children. And he started in the schools. And he had his raised beds or his allotments. And he grew and he taught, and the children came out of their classes in school, and they made, picked, and cooked, and nourished the other classes in the school with the soups that they made. And so it moved out into the greater community. And at one point, he did a wonderful survey, and he surveyed 
from the tootsiest children to the oldest people in the community. And he worked it out in different ways. And in the end, the results showed four wonderful ways of being a happy, vibrant, living community. Number one, be engaged with the soil. That's what they came up with. Be engaged with the soil. How good is that? And slow. And yes, they became engaged. And that is what the people themselves said. This is how we can be happy. This is how we can be living people.